All right. You've got me this morning, family. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woohoo! Woohoo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't you think we should do that again? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me use this one. All right. Instant shift. Praise God. All right. Here we go. Oh, that, yeah, oh, good. But did they get to hear the yelling in the other microphone? Oh, good, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Glory to God. <laughs> so, family, this morning, this message is going to kind of be a continuation from the message that I preached on October 28th. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> so, and, huh? What year? <laughs> they, that's a 18, 18. And that particular message centered up on the royal law, a law that only a sovereign can do. And that law was love your neighbor as yourself. And what we talked about is what happens when you don't love you. How that affects you and how it affects your neighbor. Do you know that after I preached that message, I got a message from someone who didn't go to this church through someone who does go to this church who said that I was of the devil and that I have absolutely no right to ever call myself a pastor. And I say this, I'm going to preach it again. I'm going to preach it again. I am all right. With people saying that, I am all right with that. I am as I did. <laughs> because I'm not talking about acts of kindness. People that are dead in sin going to hell can do acts of kindness. I'm talking about agape love that we have to have for ourselves to bring us out from that place of a false identity, a false reality, so that we can truly love our neighbors. Because to the extent that we truly love us will be the extent that we outpour to others. So that's what that was about. If you want to see it, go look. All right? Today, today's message is actually going to be two messages in one. And I'm going to be using the entire psalm of Psalm 139 from the Passion Translation to do it. Isn't that fun? Yes. The two messages are, who are you? And the second is, you are created to love. Now I'm going to change that just a little. You are created to love, but more importantly, you are love. You are love. And what's going to be fun is I'm going to prove that to you in the scripture right now. Rather than build up, 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 and finally, boof, I give you that scripture right there. I'm just going to do it up front, okay? I'm going to do it up front, but I'm not going to let you go home because the only reason I'm going to tell you that now, because that's going to be our foundation for what we're going to talk about this morning. Okay, so the word says in 1 John 4, 8, and you don't have to go over there because I'm going to do it very quickly here. In 1 John 4, 8, it says God is love, right? Now he's talking agape love. He's talking about supernatural God love. Jesus says in John 10, 30, I and the Father are one and the same. So... It stands to reason that if the Father is love, that makes Jesus love, right? 
okay? But if the Father is love and Jesus loves, and the Word says that as Jesus is, present tense, so are we in the world, what does that make us? Love. Oh, my goodness. What does that make us? Love. We are love. We are love. We don't have to try to obtain love. We don't have to try to, very good, earn it. We are it. If he is it, the father is it, we are it. And you have to know that for where we're going in this message today. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I can't stand it, so I'm going to anyway. I've got 33 pages here. Do not be afraid. We are going to get through this. We're going to do it, okay? We're going to do it. All right, Terry, now. I hate this first picture. <laughs> so we're going to put it up. All right, there it is. Look at that thing. All right. Now, that thing that is depicting a devil is saying this, if you can once get him, speaking of mankind, to the point of thinking that religion is all very well up to a point, you can feel quite happy about his soul, meaning his soul will not prosper, meaning he can be shipwrecked down the path. A moderate religion is as good for us, meaning devils, as no religion at all. And look at that last three words. And more amusing. Not know about you, but that ticks me off. All right? That just ticks me off. So, in response to this particular mockery of devils, I'm going to start off by reading Psalm 139. 19 through 22. But what I'm going to do is see where it says entities of darkness? It did say in there men. Entities in, of murderous men. But we're not going to use murderous men because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers. King David in that time wasn't born again and was not under the new covenant. So, he said, go ahead, God, kill him. <laughs> you know, just wipe him out, kill him. So, what we do is, Lord God, save their souls, but we're going to go after devils. So, oh God, come and slay these bloodthirsty, murderous entities of darkness. For I cry out, depart from me, you wicked ones. See how they blaspheme your sacred name and lift up themselves against you, but all in vain. Lord, can't you see how I despise those who despise you? For I grieve when I see them rise up against you. I have nothing but complete hatred and disgust for them. All your enemies shall be my enemies. I do hate devils. They are the enemies of our God, and that makes them my enemies. And I'm going to tell you what, there is absolutely no mercy for a devil. Terry, put number one back up there. Devils know who you are. They already know who you are. What has to happen is you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. We were foster parents. Go ahead, Terry, you can take that off. They were foster, we were foster parents for seven years. We not only ministered to the children, we had over 20 of them. Their average stay was two years with us. We had over 20, but we also ministered to the parents. And there was a family of five little children. They were all six and under. Five children. We had two, the two olders, the two older ones, six and four. And we dealt with the parents. 
dad and mom got born again, but when they got born again and we were ministering to them, mom came up the, when we saw her on one of their trips to see the children, and she said, Risa, I, was, I had a dream. She said, I had a dream, but it was the most horrible dream I've ever had. She said, I was in this pentagram. I was in this room. There was a pentagram on the floor, and I was in the middle of it. And there were all these entities around me, but they had hoods on. They had dark cloaks and hoods. And they were tormenting me. And she said, Risa, all of a sudden, the devil himself came up. He came up to me, and he looked at me, and he started to scream at me, and he said, you get away from Risa. You stay away from Risa. She's crazy. Don't you listen to one word she says. You stay away and get away from her. And she looked at me, and she said, he knew you. I said, Yes, ma'am, <laughs> he does. He absolutely does. Yes, he does. So today, we're coming out against this. We're coming out against this. I love this saying. There's a saying that I always say, and I'm not going to disappoint. I'm going to do it again. But that's going to be in a couple seconds before... I do that. I'm going to add another saying that has become one of my favorite sayings that my sister Sandy told me that I've told you and I'm going to tell you again and again. It says, you must be prepared to receive the truth about yourself no matter how beautiful. Isn't that something? So I'm going to have you repeat this after me. I choose, I choose, as an act of my will, will to, receive to receive the truth about myself, about myself no, matter no matter how beautiful, how beautiful it, is. it is. All right, here we go. We are created to agape love in three major areas. First area, our heavenly family. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are made to not only love them, we are made to have relationship with them. Second area, ourselves. We are made to love ourselves. Third area, our neighbors, which is humankind. I did not get that backwards. A lot of times we think, no, 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 we must love them first. We must love them first. But as I said before, you can only love them to the extent that you love you. We have to love us, which we talked about the first time. We have to love our Heavenly Father, but then it goes to our neighbors. This morning... We're going to be talking about who we truly are. And it may surprise some of you when you find out who you are. We are going to talk about having a relationship today with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, an intimate relationship with them. And I'm going to take one second here to talk to you about intimacy. Every time... That word is mentioned. A devil has placed within this world system the carnality, the lust, the perversions, to where when we hear the word intimacy, many times that conjures up carnal images, right? So a lot of times pastors or people that preach will shy away from the word intimacy because it brings some people torment. What intimacy means is heart to heart, sharing depth of heart with someone else. That's what intimacy is. When we have a relationship with the Godhead, 
an intimate relationship. What that means is he's willing to share the depths of his very being with us and wants us to share the very depths of our being with him. That is an intimate relationship. We are created to do that. Pastor Dorothy had a word from the Lord last week that was profound, and it's timely for us now. Last Sunday, she said, the Lord is saying, this is a different hour. It's an hour we've never seen before. Okay, let that sink in. Think about that. There's a shift that's taken place, and we find ourselves in a place where we have never been. We don't have a grid for this hour. We don't, because he said it's different. It's different from what we have ever experienced before. I believe that in this hour, this season, this event, is the manifestations of the sons of God. I believe we're going to be walking as our true selves on the earth. Just as Jesus did, we're going to be walking, and I believe that it's time for the natural to become well, wait, yep, nope, yep, it is. Our supernatural will be the norm. So the natural, our natural will become and is the supernatural. Amen. I am now going to say it. This is how we have to view what I'm about to tell you. We are not human beings having a temporary spiritual experience. We are spirit beings having a temporary human experience. How many need to hear that again? <laughs> because you need to view and hear and see everything I'm about to say to you from that truth right there. We are not human beings having a temporary spiritual experience. We are spirit beings having a temporary human experience. That is the reality of this. We have to view it from that perspective because if we don't, everything that I'm about to share with you is going to sound like and seem like utter foolishness. If you look at it from a world perspective, because it does say, and I've got it written here if you want to see it afterwards, 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 20. It says, the word to those that are perishing, the word sounds like foolishness, but only to those who are born again get to know the power of the word of God. We have got to turn off our natural human perspective, and we have to view and hear and receive what I'm about to say from the reality of the fact we are spirit beings, and as Jesus is, so are we. So are we. We have got to transition from being masters of this natural realm, believing that we belong here, into recognizing and fully accepting who we truly are, spirit beings. And you already know the word says that we're in the world, but we are not of it, right? Now, I love this. I put down here two of my pet peeves. 
I got two of them. Now nah, I have more than that. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to tell you two of them. The first one is, yep, top two. Good job. First one, I'm only human. I am only human. Okay. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> stop that. Stop that. Stop that. That would be the exact same thing as an astronaut saying, I'm only a spacesuit. <laughs> See, an astronaut has to have a space suit to operate in the realm of space. Is that correct? Yes. The space suit is a tool to operate in space. The tool is not the person. So for us to say we're only human is to say we are only the earth suit. We are the tool. No. We use the tool to get the job done in the realm that it was created and designed for. We are not the tool. We're the one that uses the tool. We are the spirit being inside this particular tool. Now you have to take care of your tools so that they can be effectual for the job that needs to be done, correct? If you treat your tools badly, they are not effectual for the purpose that they were designed and created for. But they don't call the shots. The person that operates the tool calls the shots. That's the spirit of us. We call the shots in and through and by Christ Jesus. And we tell this tool how to operate. It has no right to tell us how to operate. Okay? My other pet peeve, you are so spiritually minded that you're no worldly good. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? Now that would fit if you said you're so religiously minded. But I'm going to tell you, Jesus was the most religiously minded person that ever walked the face of this planet. And how many know that he did some good? <laughs> right? He was some earthly good. So those, those things, I just give you the benefit of those, just for fun. So, and I have a scripture here that I'm not even going to read, but it is John 16, 14, just saying we're in the world, we are not of it. We don't belong here. We're aliens in it. Now, look at this. I love this picture. Number three, Terry. Oh, I say, I wish I could move that fast. All right, I could do that. <laughs> look at this. Sister Debbie sent this to me. Yeah, clap your hands for Debbie. That was cool. Isn't that fun? So if you needed proof, that's proof right there. We belong to our dad, which means we don't belong here. <laughs> in this natural realm. And Terry, go ahead and... Now, nah, go ahead and take it off there. All right. I'm going to share with you a vision that I had. And I did share... Some of you have heard this one uh, from the uh, prayer seminar from HBI. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it anyway because... He said to. The vision that I had, I, every morning, before I ever get up and moving, whenever my day starts, I always say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Abba. Good morning, my husband. As a widow, Jesus is my husband. 
And I always say, good morning, my husband. Good morning, my best friend, Holy Spirit. Good morning. So I do that, and I just talk to him. But this particular morning, I started talking to my father. And I was telling him how cool he was. And I was telling him, you are the best dad ever. I said, I don't know how many people realize this. I said, but my dad has wings. Psalm 91. I said, I said, you are so cool, Father. You have got wings. And I think that you are amazing. And I'm just talking to him. And all of a sudden, he opens my eyes. And usually when he shows me his glory, there's no beginning, there's no end. It's just, and it's just there, and that's all I see. This time, he showed me his glory, but it had parameters. It had a boundary. And usually he doesn't do it, but it was kind of, I could see the beginning from the end of it. And what I saw, as I was telling him how cool he was, I saw the Father in the midst of the glory. But I saw just the brightness of him. I could see his outline. I saw the brightness of it. I was listening to thunder. I was watching lightning, you know, clash all around. I was watching it, and all of a sudden, I was aware that I started to formulate a thought. But the thought wasn't here. I started to formulate it here. And I knew that just instantly that if the thought that I was formulating here reached my conscious brain, I would back away. I would back out. Because the thought that was being formed was thoughts of insignificance. They were thoughts of, of unworthiness. And before they hit here, and I would back away, the father very softly said to me, and you look just like me. And as soon as he said that, Jesus instantly said, and we're equally yoked. And as soon as Jesus had finished saying that, the Holy Spirit jumped in and he was so cute. He was bouncing around and he was doing kind of one of these things at me. And he said, yeah, that's why you and me, we get each other. And that's something. And he started to expound on that and he started giving me scripture where in Genesis 127 it said, so God created man in his own image and in the image and likeness of God, he created them, male and female. And when he said he made them in our likeness and image, he was talking about Adam and Eve. Now remember, Jesus hadn't come to the earth then, so he was not talking about the image of flesh. He was talking about the image of spirit. That's why the word says that as Jesus is present tense, so are we in the world present tense. It's not something that we have to try to obtain. We are because we were created in his likeness and its image. It's who we are. We look like our dad. We look like our dad. When he's there going <laughs> with this glory and he is magnificent and he is powerful, we look just like that. And not only do we just look just like that, the word says we house his fullness. Now that doesn't mean, okay, we house the fullness of the Godhead. It means that, but what it specifically means is everything that makes the Father the Father. Sister Deb talked about the star breather. 
There are stars that have been found out so far, and these are just a few of them, but the largest star that they have found, Canis Majoris, if you tried to put the earth on that star, it would look like a speck of dust. And God breathed that out of his mouth. He breathed it out of his mouth. And we've only seen just a few stars. We house that fullness. We house that. Everything that made Jesus Jesus, everything that makes him who he is, we house the fullness of that. Everything that makes the Holy Spirit the power of the Godhead, the comforter, the teacher, the one that leads us into all the truth, we house the fullness of that. And the reason we house the fullness of that is because we're made in his likeness and in his image. He has placed eternity within the heart, Ecclesiastes. He's placed eternity within our hearts. And that's why we can house it. That's why. That's who we are. Isn't that something? It's who we are. Now, this next thing is very fun, and I did do this in uh, HBI and uh, the prayer seminar, but just kind of watch it again. I'm going to show us some pictures of us, okay? I'm going to show us some pictures of what we look like, and these aren't really good pictures because we look so much better than these pictures, but, it, you know, have you ever taken a picture and said, oh, this is so-and-so? You can kind of see what they look like, though they look so much better than this, okay? But I'm going to kind of give you a, some pictures of what you look like in the spirit. Terry, would you go ahead and just put up five through ten, I think. Okay, there you are. And you just find you as Terry goes through. Terry, just kind of count to two and go on to the next one. Oh, yeah, look at there. See? Next one. It's who you are. Next one. Look at this. Look at this. In the spirit, we are looking like our dead. Next one. Hallelujah. Husband and wife coming up. Oh, there you are. Yeah, you guys stop fighting with each other. You guys quit that. Stop being at odds with each other because that's what you look like. The two shall become one. Next one. There it is. Look at there. Did you see you in there? Did you see you in there? Okay. Now, that's not as bright and shiny as you actually are. However, it gives you an idea of this is what you look like. So we're going to talk about this love journey between first and first and foremost, our daddy. And that doesn't mean we have to love him first. It just means he's the first one we're going to talk about. Okay? And I'm not going to read these scriptures. You can go back and read them, except for one of them. But Acts 17, 28 through 30, in verse 29, it does say, Therefore, since we are God's offspring... Now, hear what I just said? We are God's offspring. Now, you can read it in context there uh, between 28 and 30, but it says it. It also says in 1 John 5, 19, we know that we are children of God. And I believe Brother Joe had mentioned that. We are God's children. This scripture I am going to read. 1 John 3, 1. Look with wonder at the depth of the Father's marvelous love that he has lavished on us. He has called us and made us his very own beloved children. The reason the world doesn't recognize who we are is because it didn't recognize him. A lot of times we have the impression when we say, we're God's child. We kind of see it in, I believe, the, the context of us in here being family. We're all family. 
we all love one another, but the relationship of family, and there is an anointing here for family, to be family, but my relationship with you as family is much different than my relationship that I have with Rachel as a family. I love you, but there isn't the same bond with you that I have with my three children. The bond I have with my three children comes from the fact that they came from me. That sets them apart from the relationship that I have with you, even though we're family. The realization of that is, even though we're all the body of Christ, you know, and we kind of belong to the Father, we say that with the same reality, if you will, as what I just said. Us together, we all kind of love one another. Woo-hoo, we love the Father. No. Just as my three children came from me, putting them in a whole different class, a whole different love bond, we came directly from our Father, putting us in the exact same class, only supernaturally so, that I have with the bond that I have with my children. I have that bond because they came from me. We are his offspring and have that exact same bond times eternity because just as they came from me, we came from him. Isn't that something? You need to hear this. This, if you will get this, will shift you out of the false identity and the false reality of the flesh that we've been operating in. It, we will, I can see it in the spirit, we will go here and take a step up, glory into glory. And we have to be in that glory into glory to walk into the manifestations of the sons of God. Terry, would you put up number 11? This relationship with our Father began before we were. And Sister Kat even mentioned that this time, and I thought it was fun because I already had this written before she came. Psalm 139, and this... Uh, goes down to verse 6. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul. You understand my every thought before it ever enters my mind, which is exactly what happened to me. Formulated here, and before it ever became a conscious thought, he intercepted it because he knew it was there before it ever got there. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord, and these verses are speaking here of the Father because in the complete Jewish Bible it says, instead of Lord, it says Adonai. You read my heart like an open book. You know all of my words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I'll take before my journey even begins. You've gone, now listen to this, you've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is just too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. 
Put up 12, Terry, would you, honey? You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. When the Lord shows me things, he shows me things in seasons. He gives me a something, parks me on it, and doesn't let me off until the fulfillment of the season. I will talk about it to people. I will pray it. I'll preach it. I'll do whatever I have to do until it lifts off. And when one of these seasons, the Lord opened my eyes, and I saw the Father, and the Father was sitting at a desk. And I knew when I was watching him at this desk, and he had papers, and the papers were in neat stacks, and he was writing on a paper, and I knew it was before anything ever was because there was nothing around him. It was just him and a desk and nothing around him. I watched that, and I watched that, and I watched that, until one day he said to me, it is the number of your days. All of these papers that you see here, all of these stacks, are those who are going to inhabit the earth, and before they ever were, I've written on their timeline of life events of their life. And then he took me to Psalm 139, and I found it. Well, months after that, and I'm still parked on that, haven't gone anywhere, but haven't really thought of it either. I go in for prayer. I, I am dealing with a something, and I am in for prayer, and Sandy's in there, and it was at the time when Pastor Kelly and Pamela were still here, and Sister Pamela was in there. Now remember, I do this for a living, <laughs> right? So I'm in there for prayer, and the Lord is ministering to parts of my heart, and, you know, he's healing them and setting them free and, you know, takes off the trauma, and he says something very nice, and my heart's not buying it. It's not buying it. It doesn't care. It does not care that, that the creator of the universe, <laughs> my dad, you know, ha, is talking to it, saying truth. And I'm sitting there, and, and Sandy and Pastor Pamela, I'm looking, I'm going, sorry, girls, I'm so sorry. I know the reality of this. I do this, and, and it, it's not buying it. He doesn't care. My heart does not care, not believing one word of it. So they said, Father, what do you need to say to this part of Reese's heart so that that part of her heart will release lordship to you and be set free? Instantly, I am back at the desk, my father writing on a paper, but... I was about this tall, white, short, curly hair, all glowy white, sitting on that desk. And my father is talking to me. And he's showing me what he has written there. And that quick, my heart remembered and released lordship to him. Now, I'm not totally stupid. I didn't run around telling everybody, oh, guess what? Because they're all going to look at me and say, you know what? You're an absolute loon. And, and I would have been okay with it, but, you know, you have to be careful, <laughs> you know, just saying stuff like this. But what was fun is not saying anything. Sometimes people would come in for ministry and the Lord would have me ask them, Lord Jesus, did you share this with this person in their life before they ever were? And every single time the answer was yes. 
And then I spoke, and I don't have permission to say their name, though they have said, given their testimony, but I won't say it just because I didn't ask. But this particular person um, at the time was not here at the church, talked to them on the phone, Pastor Didi and I. They did not know about this, and this was a couple years later. And they cried, and they cried, and they said, God caught me up to heaven. He caught me up to heaven, and he showed me that before I ever was, he showed me my life. He gave me the choice, because this person walked through SRA uh, existence before they were set free. He told me what I was going to endure, what was going to happen when I got here, and would I be willing to go through and suffer that for his glory. And before this person ever was, they said yes. They said yes. Then there was another person gone through a horrific life, and they were part of a uh, training training up people in healing the brokenhearted. And this person was being ministered to so that everybody could see. And they kept saying, he kept saying, I'd get so mad and I'd tell God, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this. I didn't sign up for this. I did not sign up for this. <laughs> and he said, finally, God had had enough. And he yelled back at me and said, yes, you did. <laughs> He said, I told you what was going to happen, and you told me yes. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that something? And then, of course, when Sister Cat was here, she had said, and then I saw myself before I was. The Lord showed me, me in the palm of his hand, and him talking to me. That's the kind of relationship that we have with our dad. We knew him before we were. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Terry, would you put up baby uh, 13? Again, Psalm 139. This is 17 through 18. Every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires towards me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. When I awake each morning, you're still with me. When I was... When I was, one of my times speaking with the father, I told my father, I said, Abba, I want to know your heart. I want to see your heart. I said, not just, I don't want to read about it. I don't want to be told about it. I said, Father, love relationship to love relationship. Father, I want to see your heart. I just want to see your heart. I asked him that for a couple weeks. Then it, it just was kind of done. And it was during a women's retreat a few years ago when Sister Nancy was here. And we were the ladies were here in the church. And in part of that retreat, Sister Nancy had said, I want all of you to just go somewhere, some, all you ladies, just go somewhere in the sanctuary. The Father has something he wants to say to you. So you guys all just disperse, go wherever. And I stayed up here, and my favorite position before the Lord is cross-legged like an Indian. I've done that ever since, ever since I've been little. Haven't changed it now. And so I'm sitting on these chairs, cross-legged like an Indian, and instantly I'm in the throne room. And Jesus is standing behind me. And how, how many of you have ever seen those old-fashioned toys? They're called uh, Jacob's Ladder, where they're made of wood, stacked up, and you go like that, and it goes flap, 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 flap. You know, the wood goes out, and then flap, 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 wood goes back in. 
Jesus is standing behind me, and it was kind of that same scenario. I watched his blood go flap, 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 and come from behind me and cover me in the front because the Father is sitting on his throne. And as soon as Jesus did that, the Father opened his heart. He opened his heart. And I got to stand at the entrance of my father's heart. And I knew that's where I was, but kind of off on the side, and that wasn't the focal point of what he wanted me to see. But I saw fiery stones, and he just had me see those to know where I was, what I was looking at, where I was. And I saw... Nothing, endless, nothing, an expanse to where there was no beginning and end. I'm just looking. I like that forever. But I was hearing. And what I heard were voices. They were little baby voices. I could hear them everywhere. But there were two voices that got my attention. And I knew that it was a little boy and I knew it was a little girl. I have no idea what they were saying, but they were talking to each other and giggling, just like little babies. And I knew from the proximity of the sound of their voice, they were going to be coming to earth very soon. Very soon. I could hear all the others. And I knew that they would be coming. And then I saw the new Jerusalem. And, and what I saw is it was all gold. But it was up in the right-hand corner. Not as you would think the expanse of, of eternity is. It was actually very close in proximity. And I saw it there, and everything closed. Everything closed. That's intimacy. That's relationship. That's who we are. This is not who we are. Family, you have got to hear me today. That's who we are. Created to have deep calling to deep, relationship, love, sick relationship, all-consuming, burning relationship with our heavenly family. Does our father sound like an ogre? No. It's a con. It's a lie. It was put there by and through trauma that has caused parts of our heart to conform into a false identity, to conform into a false reality. My dad has wings. And my dad says, you want to see my heart? I'm going to show you my heart. I'm not going to withhold anything from you. Because, see, you came from me. And I have a bond with you like no other. But see, he says that to every one of you. I have a bond with you like no other because you came from me. I know him well enough to watch him watch me. When the pastors first decided 
to go into ministry, and I'm not talking about gateway ministry. I'm talking way back when they first had the idea of activation ministries that didn't even have the name yet. And they had an idea to have a ministry to have teens out on the streets ministering to teens. And they brought a few of us together to unfold, unpack this desire that the Lord had given them to have teens minister to teens, to raise them up, to go out on the street. And as I'm sitting there in their home with a few others, I'm watching my father. And my father is sitting, and he leaned forward, and he's listening to them talk. And I'm watching him watch them. And by watching his expression, I'm understanding his thoughts concerning what they're saying. And I said to him, as I'm watching him watch them, I said, this is going to be huge, isn't it, Father? He said, yes, it is, as long as they will always Look to me, trust me, and obey me. Yes, it is. And we're only seeing a few years. Now, yeah, I'll go back. We're only seeing a few seconds by spirit standards into the hugeness that this is becoming. And I saw it all because of relationship. I saw it all because I'm a spirit being in love with my father, my husband, and my best friend. There is not one person that he will deny that same relationship with. And I tell you this, we can hurt our father. He has a soul, mind, will, and emotions, just like us. When we cause this tool to have precedence, God just doesn't talk to me. Just like just like Sister Deb, so good this morning. But you don't know what I did. You don't know what's going on. You don't know, and you don't know. How come you're not? Where are you? That affects his heart. If Rachel came to me and looked at me and said, You call yourself my mother? You say that you're my mother? Well, if you were my mother, you would do this for me. And how come you do that? Now you say you're my mother. You're not my mother. She does say that. You're not my real mother. My real mother would be rich and take care of me. And so, <laughs> so, so, you do, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, huh? Oh, yes, yes. If I loved you I'd, <laughs> and was your real mother, I'd be rich and take care of you. And so, <laughs> and so, so, and then her Auntie Sandy says, I your real mother and so, so but but we affect him we affect him we can cause him great pain isn't that something now this is who we are as a result of coming from our father this is one of my I, I love this scripture this is a fun one and I'm going to read just verse 4, but then I'm going to read the rest of it just so you have a fullness. Habakkuk 3, 4, and I've talked to you about this before, off and on. His brightness was like the sunlight rays streamed from his hands, and there, in sun-like splendor, was the hiding place of his power. Okay, that sounded cool, right? 
Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Okay. <laughs> now let me read it in the fullness. Now remember, as he is, so are we. As Jesus is, so are we. He and the Father are one and the same. This is talking about our Father. So when you hear this, you just go, that's my dad. That's my dad. God's on his way again, retracing the old salvation route. Coming up from the south through Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. Skies are blazing with his splendor. His praises sounding through the earth. His cloud brightness like dawn exploding, spreading, forked lightning shooting from his hand. What power is hidden in that fist? Plague marches before him, pestilence at his heels. He stops. He shakes earth. He looks around. Nations tremble. The age-old mountains fall to pieces. Ancient hills collapse like spent balloons. The paths God takes are older than the oldest mountains and hills. I saw everyone worried and in a panic. Old wilderness adversaries, Kushan, Midian were terrified, hoping he wouldn't notice them. I'm going to tell you, that's my dad. That's my dad. But what I want you to notice is verse 4. Forked like lightning shoots forth from the hands for therein lies the hiding place of God's power. We are wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost. We house the fullness of the Godhead. If forked like lightning shoots forth from his hand, and our hands are in his hands, and his hands are in our hands, what shoots out of our hands? That's why he says, lift up holy hands. That's why he says, I will train your hands to war. And that's why he says, lay your hands on the sick. Lay your hands on them. And that's why a devil tries to get us to sin with our hands over and over and over because the devil knows the power of God that comes flying forth when we extend our hands, lay hands on anything we do. Now, this is fun. This is just a picture, a fun picture of what it kind of looks like in the spirit when we're laying our hands on someone, when we release the anointing. Remember, Sister Cat said, when you go places, just release the anointing. Yeah, that's what you look like. That's what you look like. That's what's coming out of you. And by the way, now remember, that is a natural manifestation. So you have to bump that up by eternity. And that's how much power and force is firing out of your hands. That is you. Now let's take a look. Now here's a few of us worshiping and ministering together. Let's go to the next one. Oh, look at there. There's a couple of us. There's a couple of us. You know, we're just kind of hanging out, just kind of ministering. We're just kind of praising. You know, we're just kind of doing. But what's fun is now let's see what we look like as a family this morning when we were worshiping. Oh, look at there. No wonder there's manifestations of fire, and the fire department comes, wants to know where the fire is, saying, oh, we saw fire, we saw fire, because we got together as spirit beings having a temporary human experience, knowing who we are in the presence of God, outpouring the power of the Holy Ghost, 
not because we can, but it's because we are. It's just who we are. And I tell you, because we house that, that much enormity affects this tool that allows us to reside in this earth realm. Science has proven that the magnetic field of the human heart can be measured up to 10 feet away from your body. That's how much power is shooting from your spirit, from my spirit, enough to affect the human heart to literally be, literally be able to measure up to 10 feet away. Isn't that something? That's who you are. It's who you are. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to stop here, and whenever it's my turn again in the rotation, I'll talk about the relationship with Jesus <laughs> and talk about the relationship then with the Holy Spirit. But I believe this was enough for today, that this was enough for today, that you have to know first and foremost who you are, but secondly, who you are not. Stop allowing a devil to define you by and through your circumstances. They are not you. They are not you, and they do not define you. We don't do devils, and I'm going to tell you, we have no mercy on devils. Don't ever get your, don't ever catch yourself having compassion on a devil. You crush that thing. You take its head. I'm going to leave you with one final story just for fun, and then we'll dismiss. There was a person who came in for ministry. And this person still to this day has no idea this happened. They came in for ministry, and, and there was a manifestation where she could sense uh, an entity of darkness. A devil was there, and, and it was so cute. I told her, close your eyes and, and just watch the Lord. What's he going to do to that devil? What's he going to do? Okay, so I, I, I can see. I have a seer anointing. I see in the spirit. So it's very cute. So I happen to glance up, and that devil is standing in my office. And she's, she's there, you know, seeing what Jesus is showing her. And I'm looking at that devil who's looking at me, and that devil has challenged me in the spirit. Oh, I tell you what. That thing had challenged me, and it's staring at me, <laughs> and without even thinking, all I did was look at that devil and said, shut up. And I took out my sword and I took its head off. As soon as I did that and its head went rolling off and it disappeared, her eyes flew open and she said, oh, its head just came off its shoulders. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> and I went, oh, praise God. <laughs> And that's all they know to this day. And so, and, so, and so that's who you are. That's who you are. So, Lord Jesus, we choose as an act of our will to receive this truth about ourselves. No matter how beautiful, we receive it. We receive it. And Lord God, we absolutely believe, we believe, we believe, we believe. And Lord God, every single place that resides within our heart that is trying to lie and cause us to conform into a false identity and a false reality, Lord God, we absolutely loose that from our soul in the name of Jesus. We are not going to tolerate that in our midst. And just as the Apostle Paul said, I have not obtained, 
in the area that he was talking about, he said, but I strain towards the mark. We are already there in the spirit because you've already said that you've already gone into our future. And the reality is you've not only gone into our future that we've already combated all of this stuff. We already have victory. We've already fulfilled everything you've called us to do. And we've already crossed into glory. That's what you see beginning from the end simultaneously. We've already had the victory. We've already walked in the manifestations of the sons of God. We already, Jesus, are as you are in this world. And we are celebrating at home in glory. And that's the truth and the reality. And we receive it no matter how beautiful it is. And we give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give her a hand.